This is Sound Notion, the weekly podcast for new music and music news. I'm Patrick Gulo. I'm Nate Blyton. And I'm David McDonald. This week, we do not have a guest. We uh, had a schedule conflict with our guest, and Sam is ill, but we are going to put together a great show for you anyway, starting with some really good news. Last week, we talked about uh, the theft of a Stradivarius violin from Frank Allman, the concertmaster of the Milwaukee Symphony, or as he has sometimes been described in the popular press that I've read this week, the first chair violin, um, (laughs) which is adorable. Uh, But the good news is that the violin is back. And we unharmed. Are, and unharmed. The, Lip, so. the Lipinski strand that was formerly uh, uh, missing is now returned, and it uh, seems like everything worked out. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I think it did. I don't know if there's anything else to say there. I, well, Congratulations I they, to the Milwaukee PD and the FBI art crimes team and everybody that was involved in doing that. The, they were able to track down the taser that was used in the in the... Uh, th- in the original theft, and they were able to, from there, track down the people that originally grabbed it. And it was in uh, the case was in like a suitcase in their attic or something like that. And mm, uh, there were three, three suspects they had in custody, right, or something, something like that. Because there was there was two there were two people that grabbed it, and there was I think another person maybe that organized. Mm-hmm. You know what's really incredible about the news coverage of this story is it made the top front page story of the new york times yeah it was Pop, uh i mean like that doesn't happen in music yeah. musicy things <laughs> well well it's not music. it's it's like uh it's a musicy thing but it's more like an ocean's 11 thing yeah exactly <laughs> when classical music gets more cop drama then it makes the makes the front page i think you know <laughs> yeah well i don't i was yeah i was i was uh i was kind of surprised about that even 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 i mean yeah it's i guess it's kind of a high profile theft but no, front page of the New York Times. Yeah, you know what else? I this this next story I also read in the popular press, and thank you to the the people that sent this in. Several people sent this next story into us this week. Um, so, have you guys heard of this this uh, this this Japanese Beethoven? He's he's like <laughs> I might have heard he's like something. a composer, but <laughs> like Beethoven, he's deaf. Have you heard this, Patrick? Uh, yes, yes, I have heard this. <laughs> so, um, this, uh, the the guy's name, uh, well, Patrick, I'll let you say this, because it has lots of Japanese names, and you speak some Japanese. It has, has lots of Japanese names in it. Um, yeah, so, this guy's name is uh, Mamoru Samuragochi, um, and he is a, uh, he's a popular composer in, Jan- in Japan. Um, he kind of looks like uh, Mickey Rourke as... <laughs> as uh, as Nate was kind enough to point out, um, at least Mickey Rourke from Iron Man Two. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, it's come out that uh, basically for the past I don't know I guess it was twenty years or so, probably around twenty years. Um, most of his music has not written, been written by him, um, but instead he's hired a ghostwriter to write it all. Um, the man's name is Takashi Niigaki. Wait, so one time he did write it. I I I had heard. The, the sentence that I've been reading around in a couple different publications has been that most most of his music has been written by this guy. I'm sure, you know, perhaps the guy has written a couple things, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know, or, or knows a little bit. But basically everything that he's been famous for has not been written by him. That's wild. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So this, um, is, and this o- is our Mickey Rourke lookalike. <laughs> 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 um. But you know he he does if if you do if you're listening to the audio you can't you can't really see but um, for for our video watchers here you can see you know he has this kind of like J-pop look about him or so. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those of us that are not J-pop aficionados, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> it sounds mildly racist. No, it's not. It's the J- Japanese people say J-pop. No, I. But saying a J-pop look, I think, is the part that's oh, racist. Uh, I don't know. I'll I'll take those. I'll take those. Uh, <laughs> the, the people are angry. Just email me. We'll, yeah, we'll, right. We'll right. hug it out. His email oh, yeah, address yeah. is samrasiers at samrasiers dot com. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, anyways, he's the digital age Beethoven, as uh, as Time Magazine profiled him in two thousand one. Um, it turns out he's not, and he's a complete fraud, and. Um, so not only robot. has he not written this music, the guy that wrote the music for him says that he's not deaf either. 
Yeah, <laughs> which is which is the most incredible thing actually. Um yeah. because he has had this whole this whole like persona yeah, right. of of being this Beethoven, being like overcoming this, you know, handicap in his life to make really beautiful music. Um and, and, and uh, the know, handicap just, and the music are not <laughs> not real. What the <laughs> I think I think that's reasonable to say. It's just real Though, I, what I'm what I think is weird about this is that what composer would agree to write this guy's huge pieces without any attribution? That's, well, I mean, isn't that apparently, weird? Apparently, he's got paid the equivalent of sixty nine thousand dollars. However, I believe this is over the course of the whole time he's been working for him. Yeah, so, so it's not that's not a lot. Not a lot. Especially for no credit. That's right. bizarre. And this guy, the, so the ghostwriter came out and said that he wanted to come forward many, many times, but didn't do so because Samuraguchi threatened to commit suicide if he did. Um, Wait, so is everything cool now? Well, I don't know. I guess he just said, you know, commit suicide. Or I don't give a <laughs> You know, go, go ahead. Or, but... Um, I mean, I, as far as I know, no one has committed suicide as a as a result of this. Wow. Um, but that's why the other guy didn't say anything earlier. That's bizarre. The truly bizarre in classical music is what gets the popular press's attention, I suppose. Mm-hmm. You know what else gets their attention is the Super Bowl. <laughs> did you guys did you guys watch the the Super Bowl or as as John Stewart put it, Seattle Seahawks celebrating uh, take a Bronco to work day? <laughs> I did not watch it, um, but I did watch. It was Renee a Fleming pretty after the terrible fact. football game, but it yeah. started with, as all football games in the United States, the national anthem, which is normally sung terribly by often extremely accomplished singers, still singing terribly. Um, and this this time we were very excited we talked about it a couple of weeks ago when they made the announcement renee fleming opera rock star was going to sing the national anthem and we watched it and it was really meh i thought hmm. did, did you guys watch it was it was very hey. vanilla it was not that interesting she put that stupid tag on the end that apparently is now a thing and uh, like if we keeps being performed this way we're eventually all just gonna have to add an extra two bars to the national anthem like uh, changing the definition of a word in the dictionary it, you yeah. know what i'm talking about yes um i i thought her singing was her singing you know, for was the most great part, she's fine. wonderful i don't i'm not so certain i was really um loving the arrangement this what i'm the arrangement was very very bland yeah i would have um, been very happy with a very straight ahead performance yeah. of the national anthem uh, I, and, and at the end of the day, I can't be too upset. I mean, it, Renee Fleming got to sing the national anthem. That's, that's true. Kind of, it's kind of huge for for classical. So yeah, it's good stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm happy she did it. Um, and you know, she's she is a rock star. You're right. So I mean, if there's anyone who should have done it from that world, then she's certainly at the top of the list. Sure. Um, now, I mean, it, go as ahead. as. As something else too, um, I mean, I think just a couple of days ago, on Trebko did the Russian national anthem at the Olympics. Um, so I, I it's kind of a double whammy. I feel like the 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 cultural place of classical music is different in the United States than it is in Russia. Oh, absolutely. Like we t- we've talked before about you know Valery Gergiev being a national figure in Russia and his association with Putin is not trivial there as it might be here for you know Marin Alsup to be buddies with President Obama like that would be of passing interest to those of us in the classical community that follow that kind of thing but yeah. something like Valery Gergiev and Vladimir Putin having a relationship is like a huge thing and Putin like Gergiev does campaign ads for Putin right so this is a, I think, a, a different thing, but it is cool that she did it, and uh, I didn't see it because I can't bring myself to care about the Olympics. I know that makes me a horrible person, but 
that's very cool. I'm sure she that's did a great a, job. That's kind of one of the only like sports events that I really, really am excited about is the Olympics. I will watch yeah. the heck out of some curling when the <laughs> curling is on. What happened to our <laughs> curling outing that we were going to do? I don't know. We were oh, we, we we planned to do a curling outing a couple of years ago when we all lived we in Michigan. Watching... Yes, because we were watching the national. We were watching the Olympics in 2010, and we were like, "Man, we should find a curling club because it's Michigan. Because where else are you going to curl in the United States? Like, it's like Wait, Michigan, exactly. Minnesota, North Dakota. That's it. So we should go, and we never <laughs> did because we're losers. Um, oh, have to save it for 20. Speaking of the 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 Super Bowl, did you guys watch the Bruno Mars halftime show? That was quite impressive. Uh, yeah. I did not. Uh, I, it was a little bit uh, Michael Jackson-y, I thought. Which is not such a bad thing. Somebody to carry that torch of like putting on just an amazing show. and It was a very good stage show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So wait, um, uh, it, it Red Hot Chili Peppers joined them, correct? And the Red That's Hot right. Chili Peppers are a little past their prime. And they are. And but man, it, they well, still rocked out. out. They, uh, yeah, but they didn't rock out because not, they weren't plugged in. <laughs> That was so, like a whole big thing about them. I read it on online. They didn't like, rock so, out because they weren't plugged in. What do you mean? Like n- none of their instruments were working. Well, like, so they they pre-recorded I mean, they working, their but... instrument tracks like just just before and for this <laughs> whole production. I I maybe we'll put it in the show notes. But Flea wrote an open letter to the community of uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers fans and stuff, and uh, as just a response to all, all the outrage of them clearly not having anything plugged into their guitars, but still playing, you know. Um, so the vocals were live, they didn't plug in, and uh, Flea kind of just, like, I, I we'll have to put a uh, link to the article, <laughs> the letter that he did in the show notes, because he very eloquently explains just their, their kind of uh, choice in, in not plugging in and not playing live. And apparently sound at the Super Bowl is a big thing, <laughs> and that was had a lot to do with the 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 pressure that they had to not uh, play live and things. I but. I I know people get really upset about this, but I I never begrudge any artist for like lip syncing or lip playing sync playing whatever you call that when you're not really yeah. playing but playing along faking along with the recording. I would yeah. never begrudge an artist for doing that on national television or anything like that because like stuff has to work. Right. It's it's the Super Bowl. There cannot be a problem. And mm-hmm. anything you can do to remove uncertainty from that equation is is a good thing to do. And when you're in a really loud stadium that is in a circle, and there are speakers all in a circle pointed at the things that are making <laughs> noise, that is a big problem that somebody needs to solve. And it's outside, and it's the single most watched television broadcast of the year. I yeah. mean you can't have anything go wrong. This goes back to something we talked about a few years ago when Dead Mouse wrote that blog post, the EDM artist, uh, if you're yeah, not familiar, all... the, the electronic artist, uh, Dead Mouse, wrote the blog post called We All Press Play. Exactly. And what he was, is exactly his argument is there are people paying a lot of money to come see this electronic show and stuff has to work. And that's why I'm totally okay with uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers not actually playing live, and and I would have been okay with Renee Fleming not singing live too if it was a recording of Renee Fleming. We did the same thing. We talked about this with the uh, the presidential inauguration when um, oh right so that when John Yo Yo Ma and and uh, who who else was in that group? It was a John Williams uh, transcription like or something. something. There it was a bunch of really famous American musicians and. Is it- was it Silk Road Project? I can't remember. No, no, it was like, it was it was like, like three, a it was just trio three, or something. Three, it was three people. It was it was a it was Yo Yo Ma, a clarinetist, and a pianist, I think. Okay. And they weren't really playing, and it was because it was a freezing cold, windy day, and the sound would have been terrible if they had played it live. Um, that, yeah, that, that's 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 true. And so that's it's one. It's the same kind of thing, I think. Yeah. yeah, speaking of the cold, that's one thing I was particularly impressed with the Red Hot Chili Peppers performance is still like using their, their regular uniform in <laughs> in freezing New York temperatures and everything. Yeah, they it, they're a little too old for that uniform. I mean they're I it's time, gentlemen. Yes. It's time. Um 
So, so yeah, I, I was wondering in this Renee Fleming story, like I wonder if she got paid. That was another thing that was a bit of a <laughs> public outrage with the uh, uh, the Super Bowl halftime show was the the music. Oh well, and you know, oh no, it was the um the I think the arranger was not credited. Oh, interesting. Or something. The from the, the New Jersey Symphony, the person who wrote the at least the orchestra arrangement, of something the... like that. He came out on Lebrecht's blog and said something about it. Okay. He, so he was upset that he didn't get credited for arranging the national anthem. Is that what you're saying? I don't know if it was <laughs> arranging or, I you know what I don't want to say because I, I I don't know. But somebody's upset about something. Is he the guy do. that came up with that? Somebody's tag upset about <laughs> something. News, 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 <laughs> news. You heard it here first. Banner headline: Breaking news. <laughs> Pretend that I have graphic skills and can put up a breaking headline news <laughs> thing at the bottom of the video. Somebody is upset about gonna, something. I thought, gonna, did it, did it, did it, yeah. I thought you were going to break into news has a kind of mystery. <laughs> I need I need a little oh I have an earpiece but I need a I need a, a sound bite for something like that. We should has work on a, that. Has, let's get let's get the uh, let's actually cut that from Nixon in China. Right. <laughs> news news news. I see. I can totally sing. Yeah. When do I get to sing the national anthem? Speaking of opera. Metropolitan nice. Opera. See what I did there? Boom. Yep. We were getting a little off the rails. Steered it back <laughs> on. Nice. Uh, Metropolitan Opera is uh, gonna gonna have some interesting interesting news in the near future. Um, there are threats of a labor uh, struggle at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. There huh. is. Uh, a new contract negotiation coming up and the uh, Met is threatening to lock out the singers the, from the American Guild of Musical Artists, um, which is kind of scary. One would think that the Met could afford to pay their singers uh, a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, Patrick, you're in New York. Do you, do, you have any, do you have any inside knowledge about what's going on here? Uh, I actually don't. <laughs> this is one thing I don't have any inside knowledge about. Yeah. Um, I would say, though, that um, if if something drastic happened with, like, a lockout at the the Met or, you know, negotiations broke down, um, that's, a, you know, that's a lot of money to stop, you know, rolling in. Because the Met, you know, they're just such a huge machine. Um, you know, when they have a cancellation for a performance because of weather, that's a big deal. You know, that's like... I don't even know how much money. I mean, they're losing per night. So, I mean, if like a whole season or half a season or part of a season got screwed up because of this, that's that's not small potatoes. Right. Especially, you know, the, these things, like you said, get planned so far in advance. And they're wanting a not uh, insig insignificant pay cut for the musicians. They are asking for 10 to 15 percent cut in in uh the the wages for the singers and it's again these are this is the singers we're talking about the agma is is singers and i assume this is does not represent the principals um, um i don't believe so uh so we're talking about the kind of staff work a day yeah i mean like all like, singers right i mean like well the, the the leads are all i mean they're represented by you know cami or img or you know, right. a bunch of other so I don't they don't I don't think they, they you don't think they even need a union negotiations right unless they unless they have um you know unless they just are part of the union like right that could be um and then uh, maybe maybe they're forced in a difficult position but right. uh, I honestly don't know right well and this story on uh, the WQXR blog also points out that the uh the contract with the Met Orchestra and the American Federation of Musicians which is the the other big union uh, involved with musicians at the Met representing the instrumentalists expires in July. So um, could be two big contract negotiations that the Met is going to have to get through. And they've got some uh, some big programs coming up this year. And they say they're losing money. I, they seem to also be spending a lot of money on things. So uh, the, I, I'm never quite sure who to believe because it seems like they have a lot of money because they're the Metropolitan Opera, but I would also believe that they're not bringing in as much as they used to. They make a big deal though about sure. their their low ticket prices and um, their... well, here's the thing with the ticket prices. Did you see the the recent story about that? Tell me. So I believe um, 
ticket prices are oh they're going up um, su- subscribers are going down but singles are going up or it's the other way around that this is um no i think I that's right i read i uh, that sounds like something i've read as well um so like everyone was like oh my god ticket prices are going ticket prices are going down and then i guess peter gelb had come out and said yes but you know it's like it's like this if you're watching video so um, one is going up and one is going down yes that's the situation. But I don't know if it's like a total, like, it, you know, all in all, if they're going down or all in all, if they're staying about the same. Right. Right. So um, have you guys tried this new, this new mobile application slash web application for listening to the streaming music? We talked uh, about this a couple of weeks ago, and I said we would try it and, and let you know how it goes. So this, consider this my update review <laughs> of Beats Music. From the people that brought you Beats by Dre headphones. Um, so the the whole shtick of Beats music is discovery, right? That's the thing that everybody's trying to solve. In the digital world of infinite shelf space where the, the Spotify's and the iTunes music stores and the Google Play music stores and the Amazons of the world can stock as much stuff as they want and it's pretty much free to have as much stuff as they can and the more they have the better because you go to the places that have the best selection the big problem now is discovery right to find the things that are going to interest you and so beats music is trying to do this by working with individuals instead of algorithms they're working they're trying to get they have editors that put together playlists and and put songs together and connect songs that way um so when you first sign up with Beats Music, you tell it a bunch of stuff about your preferences, what kinds of genres you like, um, what kinds of artists that you like within there. Uh, it does do a little bit of classical. You can pick classical slash opera as a genre, and then when it pops up some artists for you to pick from, um, it's not quite sure how to deal with that sometimes it's giving performers and sometimes it's giving composers uh in in my uh experiment with it um i when i picked classical it it gave me uh and it gave me an orchestra and then it gave me bartok and then it gave me stravinsky uh and beethoven and berlioz and you know you pick the ones that you think are interesting and then it throws you into this stuff that we found that you might like section um, and so it's, it's throwing me into this kind of curated thing, um, that they, so they have their own staff beats classical slash opera puts together this playlist that they sent me called best of 20th century minimalism or, uh, the beats jazz people put together intro to Dexter Gordon. Uh, so those are things that might be interesting. There's another one they put together called miles Davis, the early years. So those are all actually things that I think sound kind of interesting to me um the the weird one that seems to have gotten a lot of attention and i'm going to try to show this on the screen if you're watching the video uh i I don't know how well this is going to show up for you but um you put together a sentence and they have this kind of mad lib thing that that you do um so you can you can put together a sentence uh telling it where you are um so it's yeah, I am, and then fill in the blank. And the options I'm getting at the moment are on my computer, which I am, in class, slacking off. I could arguably be doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm in my underwear. I'm at the gym. I'm bored as hell, or I'm on a rooftop. Um, not to be confused with being on a boat. Right. Um, <laughs> but you can select any of those. So let's say uh, let's say I'm I'm uh, I'm slacking off. Uh, and if you don't like any of those, you can hit more and it'll throw you a new set of options. And I feel like um, working out, drifting off to sleep, making bad choices. Uh, how about that? Uh, with um, beautiful people, your mom, my boo, my inner goddess, my mm-hmm. girls, myself, or a stiff drink. How about a stiff drink? That sounds good to me. I thought you were going to say my boo. No, I should have gone with my inner goddess. I'll go with my oh. inner goddess. I'm going to go back and pick my inner goddess. Uh, two, pop Latino, old school dance, indie, old school, hip hop, hip hop, new wave, and Americana. Ooh, Americana. So I have played around with this a little bit, and 
as, as many times as I hit this more options button under the genre selection thing in the sentence, it never comes up with classical or opera or anything. You can, I can get jazz. I can get uh, a couple different kinds of jazz, actually. I can get smooth jazz or jazz. Um, but I can't get classical. So anyway, you put this sentence together. Like I said, I, so my sentence is now I'm slacking off and feeling like making bad choices with my inner goddess to Americana. And I tell it to play the sentence and it comes up with... Everybody Loves Me by Alejandro Escovedo. Hmm. I don't know hmm. it. Doesn't sound like Americana to me, really. <laughs> I don't really understand how this is Americana, but whatever. I was thinking well, this got, was going to be like folk music or something. Well, it's got tremolo destroyed guitar. Right? So that's that's your baseline for Americana? I mean, it's, it's one of the factors, I think. <laughs> so we also that, have a highlight little... section here, uh, a find it section, which is kind of like find it your dang self. Uh, so you go through and, and you can pick a genre uh an activity or a curator in the find it thing and the curators are interesting they're trying to develop and they're not the only ones that do this spotify does this as well a system whereby you can kind of like set up uh like or, or follow tastemakers kind of so you can go in here and and follow uh see what's what's on this thing from the academy of music or Academy of Country Music, rather. Uh, Decibel Magazine, Downbeat Magazine, um, Friends of Beats is interesting. Uh, so these seem to be uh, just like individual famous people putting together playlists. So you've got uh, Dominique Rogers Cromarty and Wes Welker putting together playlists for the Super Bowl, um, which is interesting. Those are, those are American football players, if you're not familiar with those names. Uh, the Grand Ole Opry... Uh, ooh, Pitchfork uh, and Naxos of America has one. Hmm. Uh, so their their most recent one is all years on Russian classical music for the Olympics. Uh, and then last week when, when the uh, Friends of Beats were football players for the Super Bowl, Naxos put together, You Go, Renee, is, I swear to God, the name of this playlist. You Go, <laughs> Renee, exclamation <laughs> point. You got this, girl. You got this, girl. You and your inner <laughs> goddess got this. Um, so it's okay. They have a very good selection. I feel like the selection is no longer the, the, the deciding factor between these different streaming services. Spotify has pretty much everything. Mog has pretty much everything. Well, this is Mog, I guess. Um, they bought Mog, I think. They bought one of them. Um, RDO has pretty much everything. The thing that is missing is is still metadata you still don't get a lot of information about any of these songs um and the the stuff is kind of gimmicky there's also no free stream option which is to me the thing that that draws me to spotify and keeps me in spotify is that i can discover a recording in spotify and even though i am a subscriber and i i, I pay the the monthly spotify subscription uh for for the no ads and for the higher bitrate streaming um i can still send a link to somebody uh, sorry if i made a loud noise by hitting my microphone i can still send a link to somebody that doesn't subscribe and say hey check this out and they can check it out and that's not something you can do with this that's not something you can do with beats it's also not something you can do with google play music all access which is in addition to being a stupid name uh also not free um and you also can't do that with rdo and so that's, I, I've, I, I at one time subscribed to Audio, I at one time subscribed to Rhapsody, I at one time subscribed to Google Play Music All Access, and I have fallen back to Spotify after trying all those other things, and the thing that keeps me at Spotify is that it's much more shareable. I don't mm. know. Have you guys tried any of these? Do you have any opinions? I only use Spotify, and I, um, I think um, Pandora has a great radios i mean like i mean that's what it is but um i i know a lot of people still use pandora or i think it's the industry standard for just you know a kind of constant stream um with the 
um, it, you know, where Spotify yeah. is. Well, you, know. you can do Spotify radio, and Beats has this radio similar thing to, to Pandora as well. But I do think that Pandora's algorithm for picking the next song and learning from you is probably better than those other ones. Um, well, I think they're, so, more I think they're all kind of awful, created too. right? They're more. Um, what were you going to say? I mean, not playlists. Sorry, um, more more stations. I think right. there are more stations on Pandora. Well, you build your own stations on Pandora, right? You don't. I mean, well, you can you can discover them though, right? Like that's. Oh, you, like, okay. I've I, never I done think, that. I've only ever made my own. Oh, I still kind of listen to CDs all the time. I don't know what to say about this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Grandpa. Yeah. Right. <laughs> tell us, tell us, Grandpa. How was it when you brought home your first wax cylinder? Well, let me tell you, like, kind of stuck to the table a little bit because it was a warm day, but it was it was still still sounded pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it frighten the neighbor children <laughs> with its devil tones? I mean, it was it was pretty wild. Like, my cat was terrified because it sounded like there was a whole orchestra in my living room, and it was like. What's going on? Was Masterpiece like Theater brought to you by Sound Notion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, that's probably the, the 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 best review that you'll find on classical music on Beats Music because hey. there aren't that many people that care. <laughs> um, and I really think Beats is going to fail because they're they're just too late to a too crowded space. There are too many other options that are free, like Spotify and Pandora, that do enough of the same thing. Um, like I said, you can get curated playlists on Spotify, and you can get radio on Pandora, and you can get, you know, your uh, your um, you know what I feel like doing now playlist radio thing from uh, like a Songza or something like that. So there's. I think too many options for something like this to really take off. I think Google Play Music is going to have to go to some kind of freemium model, and so is the the iTunes Radio going to have to go to a freemium model. And RDO is is hemorrhaging subscribers too because they don't have a free option. And so I I feel I, it's it sucks that people aren't willing to spend money on this stuff, mm-hmm. but at the same time. There is a great utility to the free service that you can't get from a paid service. Well said. Yeah. Any mm. thoughts? Any remaining thoughts? Uh, mm, not on that. We business. should. We know. We we forgot to mention this earlier. The uh, New York Philharmonic is doing some really cool stuff with their archives. And frankly, I think every organization that is as old and storied and important as the New York Philharmonic should be doing something like this. But they have digitized their archives of all of their documents and letters and and all that kind of stuff and put it on the web for people to look at for free. It's pretty wild. And stuff right? even from their first concert in 1842. Um, by the cool. way, by the way, that first concert was reviewed. Uh, the flute and clarinet were somewhat too flat. And the violins behind the leader were not in good tune together after the first piece. Yeah. And uh, it is also recommended that members of the orchestra refrain from all unnecessary conversation whilst in their places. Whilst. (laughs) Whilst. Uh, And we also get things like how much musicians were paid during the first few seasons of the New York Philharmonic. It was, uh, they were every other Saturday, whether they needed it or not. (laughs) <laughs> so that's very that's very interesting i mean it's like just started off with a bunch of people that were like hey i got a violin you got a violin let's do this thing right right <laughs> and then today um, they're you know the new york philharmonic right so uh three concerts three con- uh players are to be paid 25 dollars a season for three concerts versus every, every other saturday as you said and for missing a concert you'd be fined five dollars Mm-hmm. Now it seems that seems kind of generous because you would be missing a third of the concert season, <laughs> but only find a fifth of your salary for the concert season. So if you miss three concerts, you still get paid ten bucks. Is that the idea? Like... <laughs> I guess right, so. so. Can, so well, can I mean, we all... assuming you went to rehearsals, right? Yeah, right. And that is a pretty serious biweekly commitment. <laughs> So does that mean that we can all go to our own jobs now and miss a third of our time there? 
but still keep our jobs and only get paid, only get fined a little bit. Well, I think we'll have to adjust that for inflation. (laughs) And as you know, that would make it about $11 billion. (laughs) So that's going to do it, I think. Are we missing anything? I I think we did it all. That's going to do Hooray. it for this week's Sound Notion. I know it's a short show. I apologize that it's a short show. We are going to reschedule with our guest, right, Patrick? Yes. Um, so I can't say who it is yet, but yes, we, we will. We don't want to say who it is, uh, but it was going to be very exciting, and it will still be very exciting when we get him or her on mm-hmm. the show later. The anticipation <laughs> is building. I can't wait. You know it building. Okay, I felt it building. I felt it there. I felt it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for everyone that joined us live. If you'd like to join us live, the show is streamed at every Saturday, sun, sun, uh, whatever day the day is, Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time um, at soundnotion.tv slash live. So be sure to go there and check that out and join us in chat if you'd like to participate in the conversation. I want to thank... Um, the, all the people that sent in stories this week. We had a lot of people, as I said, send in the story about um, the, the, the Japanese not-quite-composer. Um, and not quite. I was going to look up who did that, but there were, there were several people, so I, I don't want to leave anybody out. But thank you to all of you who did that. Um, if you'd like to watch the show after the fact or check out any of the links to the stories, if you want to find the link to the New York Philharmonic Archive and you can read all about these cool letters, you can read um, letters from uh, the Gustav Mahler tenure at the New York Philharmonic. Very cool stuff. Uh, we'll have links to all of this stuff in our show notes at soundnotion.tv sn which is the site for our show. And you can also check out all of our other shows there as well. We've got a show about film music called Streamers and Punches, a show about electronic music called Patch In, uh, and a new audio show that we just helped to relaunch this last month called All the Cool Parts with Anthony Landman. Um, And Anthony is working on a very cool episode coming up that I think you will enjoy with some of our favorite musicians uh, from that we, that we kind of just discovered this this past year. So I, something to look forward to for sure. Find us on Facebook, like us, find us on YouTube, subscribe to us, find us on Twitter, follow us. If you have any stories that you'd like to suggest, you can tweet at us, either at SoundNotion or you can use just tweet it with the hashtag SNWeekly and we'll check that out as we're putting the show together next week. You can find this show and all those other shows that I mentioned on the iTunes store so you can subscribe and catch every episode of all those shows automatically downloaded to your favorite device. You can also find us on Stitcher and anywhere that finer podcasts are aggregated. Uh, If you'd like to support the show, tell a friend. Tell a friend about how great this show is and send them a link. We would really appreciate that. Sound Notion's introduction includes music by our own Patrick Gulo and video by Tyler Lepp. Thanks again so much for watching or listening this week, and we will see you back next week.